All right, welcome back to another episode of the Round Ball Podcast. It's myself, Dukes, and Hunter because Jordan Bohannon. Jordan's the reason why we're recording this time, right? No, I think. Well, he said in the morning. He said in the morning, and I, I, we actually we told him ten thirty. This fucking guy, man, it's outrageous. But um, this episode is brought to you by High Noon Hard Seltzer. It's the best vodka soda in the game because it's real vodka and real juice. Um, me and Dukes enjoyed some in Michigan while watching Hunter play. It's the best drink of all time. Black cherry, watermelon, peach, uh, you name it. It's the best drink to walk around in the bar with because it's just a cool can. So uh, go to Drizzly, go to your local liquor store, and High Noon is available there. All right. Hunter, Dukes, how we doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. It was a crazy weekend. I'm glad you guys were able to come up for it. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. Yeah. So let's talk about that. So Michigan, Michigan State, me and Dukes uh, went down to Michigan. We shot a mockumentary uh, of Hunter. Basically everything he does before the, the days before the game, uh, how he's feeling. And this one was weirder because of the Michigan State uh, tragedy, which is horrible. It's pretty cool to see Michigan like do a tribute. Um, I think it was a perfect game for Michigan State to play because it's like that. That does kind of affect you guys. It's only forty five minutes away. It's fucking scary. Um, but it was cool to see that. But then once the once the ball got tipped off, it was the crowd was into it. Everything was into it. Did you during the game? Did you feel like you were gonna like pull away? That game was close until for thirty-eight minutes. Yeah, um, I'd say when we were down thirty-three twenty-five in the first half, then I was like, I was a little concerned because they were kind of they were kind of playing really well. I know Joey Hauser was um, playing really well. They were getting a lot of points in transition, and that was something that we were trying to limit. Um, I didn't think we were gonna pull away. Uh, I didn't feel like that kept that type of game. I remember last year when we played them at home, we we pulled away early. Like we were up twenty early, and we kind of had that lead for the entire game. But this game definitely felt like it was going to be a close one. I think even guys on the bench said it, and so uh, we were expecting you know a, a, a close battle. But at the end, um, you know, we made those plays down the stretch that in other games we haven't, and those resulted in losses. But on Saturday we made them, and we ended up winning the game. Um, we also didn't even tell, I think your media guy hates us. He, he put, we, we got to the game and the media credentials said, uh, Bleacher Report podcast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but so me and Dukes, me and Dukes had a, uh, t- the parking, very confusing parking. I, I'm yeah. sure you've never had to deal with that. Um, no. we, <laughs> we have parked, we parked on the, on the grass, right Dukes? Yeah, we had to park on the grass. We honestly, we were, we were driving around, and I was he was Marty was like looking at me for answers, and I was like, I I really wish I could help you out, pal, but like I have no idea what to do. And like by the grace of God, it was like light shined down on this random grass field, and some guy was like thirty dollar parking. Like, right, yeah. and every it, you can't get to, into a restaurant in Ann Arbor from six to seven thirty on day, game day. Oh yeah, well on, on Saturdays it is kind of it is kind of crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. We like walked in, we walked in one place, and there was so many open tables, and I was just like, oh, "Mario, let's just go here." We go, and I was like, "Hey, can we get a table for two? They're like, "Yeah, it's just gonna be like an hour and a half wait." And I was just like, "Can you imagine being a hostess and being like, I wouldn't even be able to say that seriously. I was being like, just don't even worry. Like, you're not gonna want to. An hour and a half is insane." She was just saying she was like hour, and I was just like didn't even let her finish. I was just like we yeah, walked I'm away. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, I thought it was very the the crowd at uh, in Michigan better than I thought. I don't know what I expected, but it got it got loud there for a second, and especially yeah. in, in the first half. Hunter, when they they were up like eight or whatever it was, Malik Hall in the first half was Michael Jordan, like. He was he was dunking like what I was saying to Mario like when he gets going, that's the, that's Michigan State's key to success. I think is Malik Hall, 
But in the second half, it didn't seem like he was doing too much. Yeah, no, I, I feel like he always has a really good game versus us. I remember when we played earlier in the year, when we played at Michigan State, he had, I think, 16 too. Um, I mean, I think he's a really good player. Uh, I think it's just tough because him and Hauser both played the same position. Mm-hmm. And so it's really like you kind of got to pick which one you want to start. I don't think either one can play the three. And I think they want to play Maddie at the five for like a little bit more size. So it, I think he does get a little underappreciated um, amongst people in the Big Ten because he is super skilled. And, I mean, you saw it. He's able to make some tough shots out there. Um. So – the first half was uh was it was whatever, but me and Dukes, me and Dukes were sitting next to your guys' bench, like where you know, like where if you need to get stretched out or if you get hurt or whatever. Yeah, no, I from your videos I saw exactly where you were and I don't know how I didn't see you. Um well you know, you were locked in. I'll give you that. It's good. I'm kinda glad you didn't fucking see us, to be honest. <laughs> um I was like yelling your name at one point, but obviously the whole crowd was. So it's not like, um, buddy, you didn't, you didn't. But there was a point where we were so close to you, Hunter, that I was like, I don't want Hunter to see us because he's like about to do his introductions. He's like locked in. He didn't. He, he didn't. So I don't want to say. I don't want to speak for Marty. There was a second where I thought he was going to grab you. I almost did. Okay, you almost did. I thought you were about to grab, and I was like, don't. Don't, don't. I was like, you know what? I don't need to see him right now. I saw him all day. <laughs> I'll see him in a second. Um, so we sat, me and Duke sat on a ladder for the first half. And then this uh, 2013 team was getting uh, announced. Basically, me and Dukes were part of the announcement. We were on half court, like at center court, literally just with them dirty. I walked, in, I walked in with Trey Burke. Trey Burke, like they needed like a microphone to like do like a little speech. And like Trey Burke was looking for a microphone. And I was like, maybe I have it. Like, <laughs> um, And then this was the best part. Cause then like it was about nine minutes left in the second half. And some security guard for some reason decided to like want to start his, to start to do his job and just came over to us and was like, can I see your pass? And we saw our pass. He's like, you, you're not allowed over here. I thought, all right, there's only eight minutes left. So we went to the media row, and I forgot that you're not allowed to, like, cheer for you guys. That was a pro- – did you see the video of us yeah. cheering <laughs> when you hit the three? Yeah, the dick riding there was crazy. I look at me like, dick riding's crazy. I'm like – Bro, we went to a game with for our friend who hit the – like, the basically the yeah, game-winning yeah. three. People are nuts. in a very close game. How was that though, Hunter? Like you, because you had a weird game. Like you played well. Like you didn't get the ball a lot again. But then you started to uh, uh, the end of this, like the second half. You were making the N one like huge shots. Your defense stepped up, and then you hit that literally a three that like that put a dagger in them. How was had that go? Yeah, no, I think yeah, it was just one of those games where. Everybody played really well, and it was just a total team effort. Like, we had six players in double figures, and then T. Reed had eight. So he was, like, right there, too. So it was, like, it was literally everybody was scoring and everybody was contributing. And so it was just one of those games where, I mean, I I kind of like it because, you know, if everybody's clicking, we're super hard to beat. Uh, when I hit that three, I didn't realize that it was only a minute left. I thought there was, like, three minutes left. <laughs> so I didn't even know that. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a minute left. I didn't know until we got back um, and sat down after they called timeout. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was a big shot. Uh, you know, I missed my first two threes. And so, um, you know, I was – but the first two looked really good. And so I was kind of um, – you know, I wasn't, like, nervous about taking the third one because I I was um, – I thought the first two should have went in. But, uh, you know, we, we ran a good play. Um, got open. Doug looked for me. And, you know – Big time players make big time plays, Marty. <laughs> the funny thing is, it's just like we keep getting to points in your season where it's like eh, they might have a chance. <laughs> like if like if you lost that one, honestly, it was like you you got to win the Big Ten championship. Like that's just basically what it was going to be. You still got a ways to go, but it's funny where you're like, all right, you win that. What is that? A quad? Are they a quad two? Yeah, quad two because it was at home. Um. Because honestly, all right, let's let's 
answer me a question, Dues or Hunter. UNC is like on the bubble. They're 0-10 in quad one. And I know their name is UNC. But like why are they like I'm not saying Michigan should be on the boat. Like you guys are 15 and 12. They're 16 and 11. Like they're they're both kind of the same, but you have three quad one wins. What is the reason why UNC? Is it just because of their name? I feel like they have like a lot of quad two wins though. But 0 and 10 for UNC in quad one is insane. Yeah, I agree with Hunter. It's like the it's the quad two and quad three wins that are, that are that are keeping them in. I mean, I probably said the last four out right now. What do you, what's your quad two, Hunter? Do you know? Uh no, I don't. I think well, one I of our managers probably knows. It was probably it looked like it, I forget it was like five and two, I think, or something like that. I don't know. It's just like when you don't see UNC being zero and ten quad ones and like. Being on the bubble, like they, I don't think they should be on the bubble. You, you think they should be or no, Dukes? Michigan's four and two. I mean, I, I understand why, like, why North Carolina is they're own own eight quad one, five and three quad two, and then they just got get the job done against the teams they're supposed to be. I mean, the last four out, which I think is pretty, pretty reasonable. Like they're not in the tournament. They probably won't make the tournament. They're going to get trying to get them in as as, well, as yeah, I mean, if you're saying if you're saying that, that the the last teams into the tournament if it's like North Carolina or USC USC will get in if it's North Carolina or Mississippi State they're going to put North Carolina in yeah a hundred percent um to end off on Michigan you guys like what how how is the locker room after like was it like the boy, like you feel like, oh, what's going to run now? Because I'm, hey, I'm, I'm going to two games in a row. I'm, I'm gonna go. I think I'm going with Rhea on Thursday. I just, just literally go. I'm not even filming. I'm just fucking going. So, and that's a huge. That's a quad one, right? Rutgers, I feel like would be a quad one. I mean, like, again, I feel like I have to ask the managers because the managers really be knowing it better. Yeah, they're 28th in range, 29th in uh, in net. But um, what was your question, Marty? I don't even know what you're Like, how is, how is the vibe now? Because you guys are in such a weird position. It's basically do or die. Like, And and Jet got – we didn't even talk about Jet got hurt in the second half, and you guys still beat Michigan State, which is insane. But how is the vibe of the team now? Uh, it was. I feel like everybody was super relieved um, when we won. Like, I think there was just a sign of relief from people knowing that, like, we closed out a game. We closed out a game that was essentially for our season. Uh, we beat our rival. Um, it was just, I think it was a sense of relief out there. Everybody was super happy, super excited. Um, coaching staff was super relieved too. Uh, Juwan was super happy. So I saw I'm Juwan. Up. I saw Juwan dancing in the locker room. Yeah, because uh, yeah, again, I think it was just relief um, that like we actually closed out a game. And so hopefully that's this- that's what I meant to ask you. That was what I meant. The closing out of the game, because you obviously haven't closed out shit against good teams as of late where you could have like Indiana could have closed out, could have closed out Iowa, could have closed out Wisconsin. But you did it against Michigan. And it's like, OK, we, we can close out a good team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say this one hopefully will give us. Because you know you're you're always trying to gain experiences through the regular season. Like everybody says, you want to. Um, it kind of goes to the point of like you don't want to play your best basketball in the regular season. You want to try to play towards the end of the regular season, I guess, into tournament play. And you know during the beginning of the season, you want to make all your mistakes, learn from everything. You know, play in close games for the younger guys. And so hopefully this will give the younger guys you know the experience of how to close out a game, what we need to do, like. The, the actions that we need to um, do in order to close out these games. And so hopefully that will kind of give them, uh, you know, the rubric and the guide to close these games out. So it'll help us um, with these last four games that we really need. All right. Well, I will see you. You got to go, right? Yeah, I got I got class uh, 30 minutes. So I'm going to head out of here. Look at this guy going to class even after he beats Michigan State. Dude, Unbelievable. Well, uh, we're going to record – 
Wednesday, but I will see you. I'll see you Thursday. Um, I have one more thing. Oh, just real before you go, Hunter brought us to a place to eat on Friday. I made fun of him for it at first because you got to cook your own steak, but it was fucking fantastic. <laughs> right, Dukes? It was great. The lobster dip. The lobster dip was incredible. Dude, I, I, missed, so I missed the lobster dip. It was very I literally, I literally miss it. It was very funny when the place uh, – was like the, the, the like you have to cook your own steak like on your like a like hibachi style and they're like yeah the kitchen's backed up like the kitchen's backed up you do, just put a slab of meat on our face and we'll cook it ourselves Man, that, I was that, like, that I is was... the one thing I don't understand about that place like it does take a, a pretty long time for only ordering like like when we when you have three raw steaks and a couple of sides it does take exceedingly long that is the one gripe I have about that place is just how long it takes to get raw steaks out. But <laughs> raw, that's, raw steaks. That's the only. That's the only. That's the only downside to that place. The food is always really good. Um. All right. Well, thank you, Hunter. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you Wednesday. All right. All right, boys. Go blue. See ya. Go blue. <laughs> all right, dudes. It's fucking me and you. But before we. Keep going. I want to talk to you guys about Rocket Money. The average person has around 12 paid subscriptions. If you think you're only subscribed to a handful of services, you might want to double check. With Rocket Money, you can quickly identify and cancel all your unwanted subscriptions. Dukes, do you have any subscriptions you think that you like, you definitely are subscribed to, and you just don't use it? Yeah. I mean, it's getting to that time of year with like when college basketball is dwindling down, flow hoops. <laughs> you know, and flow hoops will be like I'll be paying for it until like September, and I'm like I forgot to cancel. So that's that's one subscription that always I forget to cancel. And that's why Rocket Money is the best because it's it was far, formerly known as Truebill. It's a finance, it's a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills all in one place. Because it does rack up when it's like I have a I have a Planet Fitness one, and they're they're bastards and you gotta like go there but i got rocket money and it took it away because it's like ten dollars a month but then it racks up for like when you do the yearly thing at ninety dollars and it's like i don't even, i haven't been a planet, planet fitness in five years ten years <laughs> but that's why rocket money is the best over 80 percent of people have subscriptions they forgot about like the streaming service you bought to watch just one show on or that free trial that you never even used that's always funny too when they like you get a free trial, like you use it for twenty minutes, and then they, you end up paying twenty bucks a month. Um, stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to RocketMoney.com/roundball. That's RocketMoney.com/roundball. RocketMoney.com/roundball. All right, Dukes. Let's run through this. It's a holiday. No one wants to listen to our asses anyway about other teams right now. Um, we when we talked, we were talked about this weekend a little bit. You think you did you not believe in Kansas or is that somebody else? Like or, how they or actually, like do you believe in them being in that? Like like obviously they won last year, but like do you think they can make it back to the final four? Yes, final four. Yes. I don't think they'll repeat, but I think they, 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 they can make the final four for sure. I just think they're – like that game against Baylor, they were down fucking 15, I think, in the first half, and then they ended up winning by 18. Like, I don't know. I, I find them so fucking good. Uh, I want to go through some teams, and I want you to say – we'll both say yes or no for if they can make the final four. Ready? Yeah. Texas. I say no. Yeah, that's tough. It's a tough one. Like, obviously, they have the talent to. When when we're doing this, we know that it obviously can happen. But I just think still with, like, a coach that they don't – like, it's still a first-year unwanted coach. Like, Marcus Carr is, like, the most streaky player in the world – I think they are not made for the tournament. Yeah, they have good guard play. 
that can carry them, kind of like UNC last year, but obviously the higher seed. So I don't want to count them out completely. So obviously depends on matchups. I'll say yes right now, even though I'm not that confident that yes. Um, Virginia. Yes. I say no. They, they have been – this is me taking my homer away. ACC, besides Miami, and it is not great, and they're not running through it, but they are winning when they have to. Um, I'm going to still say no. Uh, Indiana. No. I, I say no as well. Um, UConn. Yes. I weirdly think they can, too. Like They just – they have – they can get hot. They have the pieces. They just got to get hot at the right time. Yeah, like we've, we've seen what they can do. Yeah. So, like, um, they haven't, they, like since since they're, like, cold streak, they put, like, their two losses really were just very close, like, one possession games. Yeah, exactly. So, I'm not too worried. Um, Tennessee. No. They're going to be out by the second weekend. Really? Yeah, I truly think so. Why do you say that? Just because like their it's offense? Elite, but like they're all they could go through spurts offensively, but they just do not score. And their coach is still Rick Barnes, right? <laughs> that is that was literally what I was gonna say. Once Rick Barnes leaves, they might have a chance. Yeah, like it's I saw something that since like in the past ten years, he's only made it past the second weekend once. And they've been like a a top five season every time. Yeah. So he's a great coach, but like I don't know. Like they like what what Houston can do, where they could just swallow teams and just go on these like sixteen zero runs and just like absolutely take you out of the game. Tennessee does to themselves. Yep. A um, couple more. Iowa State. No. I agree. Kansas State. Sadly, no. I don't think so either. Miami. No. I say yes. Yeah, that would be that would be truly shocking to me. Why is that though? Uh, just their defense. They're, they're, that's they they're don't have any defense. How much in in March? In March, how much? How, like so, if you have, you basically when you have a really good offense, you're at you're telling them to, they have to play six great offensive games in a row. You have yeah, to, you know, that is. The when, top, it's like uh, it's like Iowa when Iowa had yeah. like cars and all like. They had one off game. They're getting smoked. Yeah, like they have right. great guard play, but I, I don't know. I just don't really trust Miami. I think I think defense you need in the tournament. But again, they did make the elite eight last year. You know, like it was definitely matchup wise, it, it it helps. But yeah, but like UNC made the final four last year. But I think Miami got better. I think I think my I think UNC just got lucky. Like Miami added pack and like they I think they added better. Yeah, I just don't. I don't think they're as good. I think defensively, there there's some a lot of woes. All right, we disagree. Uh, TCU. Yes, if Mike Miles is uh, if he's healthy. Uh, Baylor. Yeah, I think they can. I think like basically everyone in the Big Twelve can. <laughs> yeah, like West Virginia could also do it. Yeah. Um, Xavier. No, no chance. I ha- I think they have no chance as well. Yeah, fuck Xavier. Um, Bama. Yes. I think you're crazy to say no. Like. I don't think they will, but like I, they have, they are one of the best teams. It's just like they do have those lull games that they're really lull. <laughs> yeah, I'm like really excited to see how these all shake out. Like the comfort, like who's playing who, who could play who. Yeah, a um, couple more. Providence. Yes, I think so too. <laughs> Bryce Hopkins is the best player in the Big East. I, I fucking love Devin Carter. I love the makeup of Providence. They're better than they were last year. Um, three more. Gonzaga. Yes. I say no. Fuck them. Creighton. Yes. I say yes. And then Arizona, yes. Yes. I mean, that's a crazy thing. We just named a lot of teams in the top 25. And I think there is some outside of the top 25 that can win the championship as well. We'll get to the final four. But – we were joking in the car. Like, imagine it's just the biggest blue bloods final four in the world. Like, it's everyone's like, oh, it's going to be crazy this tournament. There's no one like that good. Like, everyone's kind of even. And it's just like Kansas, Duke, 
<laughs> fucking just like last year. Yeah, I got Kentucky making the Final Four. Yeah. Do you think they're gonna make it? They're gonna make the tournament, right? Because that that Tennessee win kind of puts them in more. Uh, let me see what the net is right now. Yeah, they're at 35, 4 and 7 in quad 1, 5 and 1 in quad 2. Yeah. Quad 4 loss. Um, no, yeah, that, that they're they're just a in a weird ass team, but the who do you think is the big the biggest fraud conference? Do you think it's the Big 10? I mean, does the ACC count? I think the ACC stinks. I think the how, but you think the ACC stinks, right? And they have this, like, they have right now seven teams in. Relative to the rest of the Power Five conferences, they're the worst Power Five conference. But how does that make sense when they have more teams getting in than the other ones? Honestly. I'm, and I'm not I'm totally disagreeing with you. I do think, like... I, I think that this also happens some years where it's hard to argue against that point, but, like, it's like... <laughs> some team, no, like it's because, like, yeah, like it's. I can't say that some team in, like, West Virginia, right? West Virginia might not make the tournament, but I think West Virginia is better than some of the teams getting into the ACC. But like, all right, so the ACC, the I think the top six are are good. Like UVA, we know is good. Miami's great. Pitt has been playing. Pitt's 19 and 8. Like, they're a good team. Um, Clemson, uh, NC State is 21 and 7. Like, and then Duke, and then you can, and then maybe UNC. Big 10 has nine going in right now, from what I'm seeing. Big 10 has nine. Big 12 has eight. ACC has seven. SEC has seven. Big East has five. Mountain West has three. Then two, then two, then two. I just don't get how the Big Ten has nine. There's a lot of quality wins like on their schedule. It depends on what you do outside of conference play. Like I half the teams that you said in the ACC that you think are good, I don't find very good. Like I don't think Clemson. Yeah, uh, the only thing is like I have I last year we we said the ACC sucked and then they have they have two in the final four. I think they had was it three in the Elite Eight or yeah, and the same thing happened two years ago with like uh, Pac-12. Like, the Pac-12 had Pac-12 all those is always just like Pac-12 has two teams in it this year, right? Yeah, like Pitt, it's Pitt, and it's like Pitt. what? Is Pittsburgh good? I think they they can make a run because they're yeah. Like Pittsburgh's they're, good. That's what I'm saying. Like it's so that's the top three for me. Like I'm I'm not sold on Clemson, Duke, Wake. Like I'm not sold on like really anybody on the in the even like Virginia I'm not like completely sold on at this point I think they're very good. I I don't know if people are sleeping on Duke they're sleeping on them they're a good basketball team I don't get why everyone's sleeping on them because they're not that good. Uh, I'm gonna save that for. Uh... Save that for for the tournament, but haven't they also like been like pretty injured, and they have like a first year? They're injured, but like not like they're everyone's back now. Yeah, I mean, um, so, so if they can get it together, I mean, it's the right time to get healthy, string together some wins. We've seen it happen before. You got anything else? Uh, this is a holiday holiday fucking episode, and our friends yeah. full hunter showed up. Yeah, that college doesn't have off on President's Day. Yeah, that's weird, but it's probably like a public university thing. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Maybe they do have off. What? Maybe they do have off. Um Jordan has no excuse now because well, it's still close to his time, ten thirty. But this man, I've never seen someone just missed so many episodes when they said I'd rather them just tell me no. Um, oh. I can't believe fucking 
I didn't know Westbrook's going to the Clippers. Yeah, I saw that. Um, all right, that's the show. We'll be back on Wednesday, hopefully, with a fucking full crew. Um, um, it's going to have to be late night or Thursday morning, actually. I'm going to the Islanders game. Um, all right, that's the show. We'll see you guys Thursday. <laughs>